Welcome back to my dark room. Today, we're going to talk about how to clean some things in the dark room. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. That sounded better in my head. Now, when I am talking about dark room cleaning, Today, I'm not talking about simple things like wiping down dust and floors, things like that. We're going to be talking about cleaning trays and bottles from some of the chemicals that are commonly used in darkroom work. Now, before I make a mess on myself, let me point out new merchandise available. If you want to help support this channel, you can go down to the link in the description to Teespring and see some of the designs that I've made. So thank you for supporting me and that helps me keep making videos. Now, when it comes to cleaning, now you can always just wash things, but I find that soap and water doesn't always work with some of the stuff that we use in the dark room, particularly silver stains and the like. So I've got a couple of different things that I wanna show you. The first thing is if you're using bottles and you want to change from one chemical storage to another, then you need to clean the bottle out. Often we'll just rinse it out with water really well, but that doesn't always get all the last traces. So one thing that's recommended by Kodak, and I do like to use what manufacturers recommend, is a simple solution of sodium carbonate. It's a 10% solution, and we've got sodium carbonate right here. This is uh, lab grade from Artcraft Chemicals but you can also get it in bulk sizes for swimming pools. So you can go to a swimming pool supplier. I remember I got some uh, from the pool section at Walmart once, and it's fairly inexpensive. You don't need good quality for cleaning, so you can always get cheap stuff just for that purpose. Save the good stuff for recipes. So to make a 10% solution, you can add simply 100 grams to one liter of hot water. Just stir really well until it's dissolved. It will probably look cloudy like this, but it cleans the bottles really, really well. So get yourself a funnel, pour it down in there. You do not need to use all of it. Just a good amount. Shake it really, really well. And if you have other solutions, you can reuse this. This was just a stop bath. So sodium carbonate is alkaline and it is going to neutralize any residual fixer, but also changing the environment within the bottle to alkaline allows it to rinse much easier. So let's rinse that out. Give that a good shake. And just pour the water out. <laughs> and you can do this with all of your bottles and that will help just get it a little bit cleaner than simply water. And I wouldn't use soap because that can leave some residue that may get mixed up with the next batch that you put in there. So sodium carbonate, easy to make, easy to, to use, <clears throat> and not very expensive. And it'll just make sure that your bottles stay nice and clean between different things. So now that I've cleaned that, that was stop bath, I would now feel comfortable putting even a developer in there after a rinse or two. So uh, very simple solution there. Now, when it comes to more complex things, such as silver stains, um, like on this bottle right here, you may need to use something a little harsher. And Kodak has a couple of um, recipes for tray cleaners, which are uh, silver stain removal uh, formulas. <clears throat> they are called TC1, tray cleaner one, and TC3. The main ingredient for both is sulfuric acid, a concentrated solution of sulfuric acid. Now that is a very dangerous chemical and you do need to be careful when handling it. I already pre-mixed mine, but I wore uh, heavy rubber gloves and eye protection and I mixed it outside 
with plenty of fresh air. So I recommend you handle it in that way. Now, where do you get concentrated uh, sulfuric acid? Well, the cheapest and easiest place is actually from an auto supplier because it is used as battery acid uh, refresher. So it comes in that box and then in this container. So it says battery fluid, acid, but it is sulfuric acid. There's no other ingredient, just water and sulfuric acid. And it's about a concentration of roughly 38%. If you buy lab grade from, say, Photographer's Formulary, it's going to be about 48%. So you can add just a tiny bit more than the recipe that Kodak provides if you like. I have not found any reason to do so. So in addition to the sulfuric acid, you can mix in TC1 uh, sodium, no, I'm sorry, potassium dichromate. I didn't make a TC1, I made a TC3, but potassium dichromate is a little bit more expensive and harder to get, and it's a little bit more dangerous than TC3. It also uses, in TC1, 96 milliliters of sulfuric acid. TC3, on the other hand, only uses four milliliters, so you don't have to handle as much. So that's the, the, uh, the formula that I decided to use. The other ingredients needed, Potassium permanganate. You can buy that easily off of Amazon or other places. It's not very expensive. Um, it's going to come in probably a little bottle like this. <clears throat> it is statically charged. Um, so when you are pouring it out of the bottle, it does like to float and stick to other things. So just be careful with that. You're going to need only two grams. So it doesn't take a lot four milliliters of sulfuric acid. I measured it out with a, where do I have it? Oh, over here. Uh, here we go. Measured it out with a plastic syringe so I could get more accurate measurements. You mix those into one liter of water, do the permanganate first, and then the sulfuric acid. Always add your acid to water uh, and cold water and that makes up a one liter solution that looks a lot like really nasty grape soda. The permanganate, by the way, is going to stain everything it touches purple. So be careful with that. Then you're going to need to make up a solution B. And for that, one liter of water, you're going to mix 30 grams of sodium bisulfite, and once that's dissolved, one or uh, 30 grams of sodium sulfite. Once you have that, you're going to have a second solution, and then you're going to use them uh, as such. So I'm gonna take my bottle, and I'm going to add, whoops, before I do that, let's put on some gloves. Like I said, that stuff likes to stain. Let's glove up. Let's move bottles. And let's put some in. Now, you do not want to mix these and store them. You can, however, um, reuse them in one batch. So I can go ahead and use it in this bottle and then immediately put it into a tray and see if I can clean that up. So I'm going to mix this around. And we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes and we'll come back to it. All right, let's pour this out. So this will probably cause a brown stain on your container. So I can already see there's browning here. That's okay. Set that aside for a moment. And now we're gonna rinse this out really, really well. You want all traces of that purple gone before you go to step two. All right. Now, put in step two. About an equal amount. I filled about halfway.
And then we're gonna shape it up. Like a cocktail. Ready to serve. All right, and now I'm ready to mix, uh, rinse that out. But as we can see, all that black and brown staining, gone. And now, take my own advice, I'm going to use my sodium carbonate solution so that it is ready for the next step. There we go. So that is a much cleaner bottle than when I started. Yeah, I'm happy with that result. Um, I got that oxidized developer because I just left it in there uh, way too long. It died on me and clearly stained the bottle. However, that stain is gone. So it works really, really well. So if you've got troublesome bottles and you want to get rid of that stain, uh, by all means, go for it. Let's see, I've got this stir paddle. Um, it is also very, very stained. Let's see if this will work in here. Let's leave that for a moment. While we are leaving that, I'm going to see if I have a tray and we'll uh, clean a tray if I've got one. Here's one, kind of brown. Let's see if it does this, or if it works on this. So I'm just gonna switch this around. I'm gonna do his thing. Maybe get up on the walls a little bit. Now this is kind of an inherited tray. I have no idea if that's silver developer stain or not. It may not be. If it's not, it may not do anything to it. I feel like I probably should have done a test before uh, turning the camera on. This could be quite embarrassing. Well, it looks like it is staining the bottom with that brown stain, I expect, but that could be my imagination. All right. Okay, let's rinse that out. Let's pour this in. Oh my goodness. Almost immediate reaction. Yeah, okay, so that was developer. That's good to know. Swirl that around a little bit. If I can work it up on the sides a little bit. Yeah, that, that cleaned that tray up really, really well, almost immediately once I put the uh, sulfite solution in. Let's rinse it off. Now, there's still staining on the edges because I didn't really get it up on the sides. But now that I know that works, I might find a way to do that. Here's <laughs> this tray. I don't expect this one to work. That one's pretty, pretty far gone. Okay, so I'm going to pour this in this tray. I don't know if this will work. So let's put this in. Clearly a work solution. It does its job. Now, why didn't I get this one clean? Um, mostly because my main developer of choice for uh, for prints is Amidol. And Amidol is actually a staining agent. It's used in uh, dyes for fur and things like that. So I think this is actually beyond uh, simple silver staining from developer. It is actually dyed from the Amidol. Uh, I also occasionally use pyro developers and um, and that is also a staining agent. <clears throat> so 
I am not surprised that this did not work. It actually has changed color from what it was. It was much more black and now it's kind of a uh, slightly purplish brown. So I think this solution did affect the silver and remove it. And what's left now is just stained plastic from an Amidol, which is the same thing that my stir stick, because it's the same stir stick I use for everything. Uh, same thing I use there. So not too surprising. <clears throat> but if you're trying to reuse some of your bottles or you uh, pick up some old trays and you want to clean, kind of clean them up or just maintain the equipment you have, these two things work really, really well. Cleaning bottles out with a simple 10% solution of sodium carbonate gets it nice and clean and ready for the next solution. And then Kodak TC3, tray cleaner formula number three, two part solution, but it works really, really well. Just be very, very careful in handling potassium permanganate and sulfuric acid, in this case, battery acid. But it does work well. As long as you take the proper precautions, you should get some cleaner trays. Uh, you can also use it on old stained bottles. As you saw with that Jobo bottle, cleaned it right up surprisingly quickly and cleanly. So get out there, get in your dark room, start cleaning some things up and don't be a slob. Uh, other than that, make some good photos. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and pick yourself up some Naked Photographer merch and keep this channel going. Thanks a lot.